What's going on guys, it's Tony Sauce here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to play better in NHL 25, especially if you're trying to get more wins in Ultimate Team. It's pretty sweaty this year, especially in Rivals and Hut Champs. So if you're looking for some tips, look no further. I'm going to show you guys five things you can do better in the game to help you get some more dubs. All right, boys, so the first thing I want to talk about is face-offs. Face-offs are very important. If you don't have like a good strategy or you don't know exactly how face-offs work, click the link link down below in the description. It's going to be the first link. It's to my face-off guide. I think I'm pretty good at face-offs and I have a good strategy. So if you don't really know about face-offs, watch that video first. But the reason face-offs are so important is because it determines whether you're playing offense and getting a scoring chance or you're playing defense and the other team gets a scoring chance. The, the amount of times where I've lost a face-off and then they come down and score, it's like if I had just won that face-off, they wouldn't have scored. And it's not that they just wouldn't have have scored, I also would potentially have gotten a scoring chance and would have scored. So like face-offs really can determine whether you score a goal or you get scored on. So I can't stress enough how important face-offs are. A lot of Division One players have commented on my videos being like, you know, you got to have a better center. You got to have a better uh, face-off rating on your center for your lines. And it's very true. Having a good face-off uh, player, a guy with a good face-off stat, a good center is so important for winning games. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is L2ing. So if you don't know what L2ing is, it's holding down L2 for like a split second, not just like tapping it, but holding down for a split second so that you initiate that side skate with your player. And it gives you a little bit of a speed boost. So like I like to do it when entering the zone. I kind of do like an L2, my guide will side skate and then I'll let go and he'll almost get like a speed boost and a balance boost. I find that when like people try to hit you as you're leaving that L2 position, you almost get like a boost in balance. So it's, it's a little bit glitchy. It's a little cheesy, but like all of the best players are L2ing. So unless they patch it, it's it's fair game in my opinion. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is using your defense and backtracking with the puck. Say you're trying to take it through the neutral zone. You don't see anyone open for a pass. The neutral zone is clogged up. Instead of trying to force it and making a bad pass or turning over the puck, just give it back to your defense. Go D to D with the puck and open up the ice. This is something that is used very often in hockey and I don't want you to like say that it's ragging. It's really not ragging. There's a big difference between dropping the puck back, opening up the ice, you know, going D to D in your own zone and ragging. All right, guys, just want to show you something real quick. So we have the puck with Makar right here, right? So instead of forcing it up to that winger, honestly, that's not a bad pass if you get it off quick, but McKinnon's a pretty fast player. He can close in pretty quickly. And as you can see, he is closing in pretty quick. You know, you could bounce it off the boards, but instead of forcing the pass, you know, I cause a lot of turnovers by forcing the pass. So instead, we wrap it around the boards. Oh my God, why is that happening? Yeah, all right. Instead, we wrap it around the boards over to Orr right here. We wrap it all the way around the boards. Watch. All the way around. Now look at Orr. He has so much open ice. Take it up. Nice breakout pass to the center who gives it up to the winger. We have a nice rush without forcing that pass. Bringing it back to your defense is, is used in real life hockey. I do it all the time in real life hockey. It's one of the first things I was taught in mites going D to D. So use that boys. Don't force it through the neutral zone. Don't force cross ice passes that are risky. Give it back to your defense, circle around, maybe get a line change and open up the ice. And this brings me into my next point, good line changes. There is such a big difference between a player that has no energy and a player with full energy. Energy is very important. And it's also very important in hockey. There's a reason why shifts go from like 30 seconds to a minute and a half. Having full energy, having full speed bursts in hockey is super important. And good line changes are very important in this game. Like line changes are already kind of fucky. It seems like players will just completely ignore the puck and skate past it just to do a line change so it actually is important that you line change at certain times I typically like to line change when I get the puck in my own zone like let's say I turn the puck over and I have it in my own zone if it's not like um, a breakout situation where you know they have all five offensive guys in my zone and it's more of like a you know it's a rush situation so like they're taking it in with like a two on three or like a, a two on one or something and I turn the puck over and there's only one or two guys one or two opposing guys in my 
my zone. That's when I'll go D to D behind the net and initiate a line change, wait for some fresh skaters to come on the ice. Another time I'll do it is when my guys have no energy. Like let's say I'm taking the puck into the zone and my guy has no energy. I'll just fucking throw it on net and line change. But you got to be careful with this. With offensive line changes, it's fine. But there's been times where I throw the puck into the offensive zone, just throw it on net with a guy with no energy, and I try to line change my defense. They go very slowly, and um, the opposing team will take the puck in, and they'll get a breakaway because my guys are taking so fucking long to line change. So be careful about the defensive line changes. Typically, I do defensive line changes when I actually have the puck with my defense in my own zone, and there's only like maybe one four checker, or maybe they're doing a line change. That's when I'll initiate a D change. Uh, one of my defensemen will go while I hold the puck with the other defenseman. Uh, a, a forward will swing through the neutral zone. I'll give him a pass, and then that other defenseman will go and change. So just be careful with the line changes. They're actually actually is strategy to it and there's strategy to it in real hockey you know there's a big difference between a good line change and a bad line change so just translate that to NHL and you'll have a lot more success now the next thing I want to talk about is disciplined defense I think that this is one of the most important things in the game playing real disciplined defense not just like stepping up every single time trying to get a big hit really playing good positional defense gap closing clogging up uh, shots, clogging up passing lanes, and just not like over committing, you know, just playing in between the person with the puck and your own net, not over committing, not trying to force turnovers. I find that like when I get burned, it's when I'm fiending for the puck. It's like I'm, I'm spamming poke check, doing everything I can to get the puck instead of letting them just take like a low percentage shot and then them basically turning the puck over themselves. You know, I find that when I really try to force turnovers, I overcommit, I get beat. It allows for a D to D one timer and it allows for a snipe or some shit, you know? Also clogging up that D to D one timer is very important, but you gotta be strategic with it because if you're just covering that uh, defenseman who's open for the one timer, it's gonna allow someone to skate up and just like snipe it on you. So you really gotta play like a balance between covering that snipe, but also covering the one timer at the blue line. But overall, just playing very disciplined defense is extremely important. I find that when I get frustrated and I just like step up every time because I'm frustrated, it gives up big scoring chances and I lose games. But when I play very disciplined defense as if I'm playing real life hockey, I find much more success. Now the next thing I want to talk about, the very last thing, one of the most important things and one of the easiest ways for you to get more W's in NHL, hold the puck with your goalie. I know that stoppages in gameplay can be extremely frustrating, but just holding the puck with your goalie can be extremely beneficial, not just because it like slows things down, not just because it decreases the chance of you turning the puck over to a guy that's literally right in front of the net, but it also allows you to change your lines, put some fresh skaters on the ice, maybe put like a good center on the ice who has a high percentage chance of winning that face off so that you almost get like an automatic turnover. That's extremely beneficial. Now there are times when you should throw the puck out. Like if it's a very high percentage chance that you're gonna get that puck when your goalie throws it out, like you got three guys around you and it's just a direct little throw it out to your defense, you get a good breakout, they don't have a lot of energy, you come down with guys with energy on his players that didn't line change. Yeah, that's a great time to throw the puck out, but you also need to hold the puck sometimes. The amount of goals that have been scored on me because I was just antsy and I was like, I don't, I don't want to hold the puck. I don't want a stoppage of gameplay. I don't want to have to win a face off. So I throw the puck out, bam, turnover, they score. I probably could have like 20 more wins if I had just held the fucking puck. All right, boys. So seriously, just hold the puck sometimes. Don't be a fiend. But there's also times where you should throw out the puck. Just try to recognize that and try to be patient. Patience is very important in the game of NHL. Now that's pretty much it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll answer all of my comments down below. If you guys want to talk hut in Discord, join the Discord link in the, in, the, ugh, in the description. If you guys want to see me go live on Twitch, click the link down below as well, and I'll see you guys there. Peace.